All right, so today we're going to start looking at polymer crystallinity. And to start that discussion, I want to talk about polymer thermal transitions uh, or thermal transitions that uh, polymers can go through. So when we talked about metals and ceramics, we talked about amorphous and crystalline materials. Polymers can do the same thing. Uh, they can uh, be crystallized, they can stay amorphous uh, upon um, cooling. And so I want to basically go through the different options or scenarios that we have with polymers. And so we start with kind of the liquid melt, um, and there's three possibilities. Uh, it can uh, remain amorphous or become an amorphous glass. Um, it can uh, have some amorphous character, but also have crystalline and be two-phase, and we call that semi-crystalline. And it can be fully crystalline, so everything in the material becomes crystalline. So I must say for this last one, this is really not likely in all practical scenarios. Uh, you can do... Uh, you can make a fully crystalline material in the sort of laboratory settings when you're purposely trying to do so. Uh, but for the most part, um, you either get an amorphous uh, glass or you get a semi-crystalline. So some fraction uh, is still going to remain amorphous. Okay. And so we talked about, again, before with uh, metals and ceramics, how we can... Um, get this glassy state, this amorphous behavior. So rapid cooling is one of those methods. So if we rapidly cool the polymer, we kind of leave no time for the crystallization process to occur. And so that polymer liquid is rapidly cooled from the melt and it leaves no time for crystallization and you get a glassy state over here. And so let me kind of just walk us through what this graph is and what it's telling us. So this is a temperature. So we're typically starting up here at the higher temperatures, like the liquid, and then decreasing, so going to the left. And then we're looking at volume, and specifically specific volume. So specific volume is volume normalized by mass. And so you want to, if you want to think about it another way, it's the inverse of density. So density is volume by mass, or mass by volume. This is volume by mass. And we know that the volume of a material will change with temperature, right? The higher the temperature, the higher the volume. Uh, but also with different transitions, like melting um, and uh, going from a solid to liquid and so forth. Those have a distinct change in volume, which is why we're looking at the specific volume versus temperature plot. So when we do this rapid cooling, we get a liquid and you see that when it's in this kind of liquid or rubbery state, um, it has a pretty linear change in the volume with temperature um, until we get to this point, after which uh, we call it a glassy state. And this is the amorphous solid. And so this kind of gradual transition, the gradual change in slope, is known as the glass transition temperature, or Tg, as you see here. So this is the temperature that separates the rubbery or liquid state from the glassy solid. Uh, so this is important for amorphous materials because we don't ever form a crystalline solid. And so if we're looking at uh, amorphous materials and amorphous phases, we need to know about the glass transition temperature. All right, so now let's look at a more slowly cooled uh, material. So not this sort of case two, but let's look at case one. So we're slowly cooling, and so this allows crystallization to occur. And what is important about crystallization is that when it crystallizes at the lower temperature, um, that rearrangement at a specific temperature, the melting temperature, uh, results in a step change in volume right? Because the liquid has a relatively high, and then when it rearranges at that temperature, it drops suddenly. And so that is the melting temperature, or Tm, right? So we have a distinct chain, phase change, and therefore the realignment causes it become to become more dense. And so we see an abrupt change. So when we're looking at these curves, when we see this sort of step change, 
it tells us that we have a change in phase like liquid to solid crystal and solid and when we have this sort of more gradual it tells us we have a glass transition so we have an amorphous um, tr uh, transition and so those are the kind of the two distinct things that we can get from uh, from this curve and so those are kind of the two extremes uh, we can either have uh, again a crystalline uh, transition or the amorphous transition and so a semi-crystalline polymer is going to have both of those so let's kind of look at this new plot that I have here. So for A, um, A is a, going to become a glass, and so uh, nothing happens at the melting, but we have a step change at the Tg. Um, the crystalline, it follows the same liquid curve, but we see this big step change down to C, and that's a crystalline solid, and it's not affected by Tg, right? So those are the two extremes, but as we know, a semi-crystalline polymer um, has elements of both. It's both amorphous and crystalline. And so for that, we see that it follows the liquid the same way, but then we see a step change down to B, but it's not as drastic of a change because we still have amorphous or liquid material. And then it also goes through a transition at Tg. So it's affected by both temperatures, Tm and Tg. So this is what we see with semi-crystalline polymers. We see uh, both Tg and Tm. All right, so thinking about these materials and how they kind of govern what we can use for the material, so or the polymer for. So we call that the upper use uh, temperature, and that's basically the highest temperature that we could use that material. So there's... Um, the three materials we're kind of thinking about, an amorphous thermoplastic, so that's one that's not cross-linked, so it um, is reversible, right? So it goes undergoes those reversible changes that we talked about. So for that kind of amorphous material, um, if we go above the Tg, then it becomes rubbery or liquid, right? And so it's not going to be usable because it's no longer a solid. And so Tg is going to govern the upper use temperature for amorphous materials. If we have heavily uh, crystalline materials, so high, very low amounts of um, amorphous materials, uh, then the not much is going to happen at Tg, so the melting governs the upper use. And so you can kind of use that as um, the upper use. And for a semi-crystalline, in those materials, um, above Tg, the amorphous phase becomes rubbery, but the crystalline phase would still be liquid-like because the TM, the melting, is always above the glass transition. And so in this case, um, these are typically used above the TG but below the TM, so melting. And so let's look at kind of the, the mechanical properties uh, of that. And so this is, um, at first we're going to look at an amorphous. So this is the thermal transitions in an amorphous material. So at the low temperature, so here on the left, and this is looking at the modulus. Um, so the modulus is quite high in that glassy region. And then at this temperature, uh, we see a decrease in the modulus. And this is from viscoelastic behavior. We'll talk about this specific term uh, later. Um, and then uh, it goes down to rubbery. So this is basically what we talked about. So rubbery and liquid kind of all, all in that same uh, area uh, are above the Tg. And then eventually it'll go all the way to a viscous liquid or a melt. So basically, um, you know, after this point, uh, it becomes less and less usable. So this is kind of shattered, you know, kind of glass behavior. And then we see that kind of this is kind of a, a viscoelastic or rubbery flow. And then this is just, you know, a very viscous liquid. All right, so let's look at semi-crystalline materials then. So in this case, um, at the Tg, which is right around here, only the amorphous phase experiences that glass transition. And so the modulus stays quite high because nothing's happened to the crystalline phase until we get to this much higher temperature over here. And so that's why for semi-crystalline uh, thermoplastics, we can use them above the Tg.
and often it's uh, it's it, uh, preferred because we have a little bit of a rubbery phase that compensates from some of the glass-like behavior. So then at this point it would melt and therefore become uh, no longer useful. So to give you some examples of this, um, polyethylene we've talked a lot about. Uh, polyethylene has a TG of minus 120. Right, so obviously, if we're using polyethylene, we're using it above minus 120 Celsius, but we're not going to go above 135. That would be the melting. So we do, in fact, use it in this region where we still have some mechanical integrity, but it's no longer glass-like. So the kind of um, the connection here, if we look at modulus and think about a semi-crystalline, if we increase the amount of crystalline uh, phase or the amount of crystallinity, then the modulus is going to go up, up and up and up, 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 right? So that's how we can kind of increase, that's the connection between crystallinity and modulus here. So the more crystalline, the less kind of rubbery behavior uh, we're going to have. So again, this is the example of polyethylene uh, with those two temperature. So clearly we're using it somewhere here in the middle uh, below this, but well above minus 120. 